So what we do first is that we will subtract y to the x on both sides because I want to have one side to be 0. So we will first get this right here, x to the y's power minus y to the x power, this is equal to 0. And if we focus on the left-hand side, this is what we call a multivariable function because this expression has two variables. We can interpret this to be a function with two input, namely, you know, multivariable calculus. You know? So I will write this down as capital F with x and y to be the input. This right here is the function. And we have this is equal to 0. That's what we call the level set, level curve. But don't let that bother you for now. We are going to differentiate capital F. And that's called the total differential. So let me write this down right here for you guys as well. Total differential for this right here is denoted by df. And this is equal to, you have to know how to do the partial derivative. So it's the partial of capital F with respect to x. And then you attach uh, the x to it. And then you add it with partial of capital F with respect to y. And take a guess what's next. Of course, dy. And the cool part of doing this is that you may have like 100 variables right here, and it pretty much just continues with the same fashion. Partial of f with respect to the first whatever variable, and then you put d whatever that variable, and then do that 100 times. That's the idea, but hopefully nobody ever does that. Anyway, now here is the fun part. Let's focus on to get the total differential. And to do so, of course, we just have to get the partial of f with respect to x and so on, right? Okay, um, first of all, partial of f, you should see that this is equal to 0. If you have any number, when you differentiate the constant, you get 0 anyway, so this is equal to 0, right? Focusing on partial f with respect to x, this is how we do it. In the x world, x is the variable, y is the constant. So for the first part, x to the y's power, this is the usual power rule. And I know this is going to be really, really confusing, so I will put this down in blue for you guys on the side. So remember that d, d, t, I'm just using t because I don't want you guys to confuse the x and y. Suppose you have t to the nth power, what's the answer for this? This is a usual power rule, isn't it? You bring the power to the front and minus 1, so this is n, t, n, minus 1, like that. This is the power rule, because t is for the base, and it's just a number. Now, if you have d, d, t, sorry, this should be d, t like this. <laughs> if you have some number for the base raised to a t's power, this right here is an exponential situation. This was a power function. It's different. And the derivative of this is that you first repeat b to the t's power, and you multiply by ln of the base, which is ln b in our situation. Right? That's the exponential derivative for that. Okay, be careful with this. Partial of f with respect to x. This right here is the first situation. We bring the y to the front, so we will have y, and then x stays, and then you minus 1, so you have y minus 1, like that. And of course, the second part, we bring down minus. In the x world, x is right here for the exponent. So this right here is the exponential situation. So the derivative of y to the x power with respect to x is what? You repeat y to the x power times ln of whatever the base is, which is ln y. Right? So I'm using the second one for the second part right there. This right here is partial f with respect to x. Right, so you attach a dx next to it, and we can continue. Next, we add it with partial f with respect to y. So you pretty much do the backwards. So this now is the exponential situation first. Right? So you are going to first repeat x to the y's power, but you multiply by ln of the base, which is ln x. And to continue, in the y world, y to the x power, x is the constant, so you bring the x to the front and subtract 1 for the exponent. You get minus x, y to the x minus 1. Aha! This right here is the partial with respect to y, and of course you attach the dy after that. That's the calculus 3 total differential situation. 
And of course, I will show you guys that this is indeed the same answer as the one that we got previously. And of course, I want to get dy dx. Here is the dy part. I'm going to maintain this, all right? So let's see if we can do a few things in our head. dy dx, this is equal to zero because you have this function equals to a constant, right? Capital F is equal to a constant, and you differentiate a constant, you get zero. Anyway, you keep this on one side, you bring this to the other, right? You bring this to the other, and you are going to change the sign, right? Because it's a minus of that. So I can write this down first. So you will get y to the x power ln y, and then minus y x y minus 1, like that. So you bring this to the other side, and then once again, you just change the sign. So I just switch the... Um, order of that, right? And I will divide this on both sides, right? I divide this because I have this dy. I need to have the dy on the top, so I will divide this on both sides. So I will divide this, so this is built on the bottom, it becomes y to the x power ln x, and then minus x, y to the x minus 1. Cool, huh? And now, how can we fix this situation? Well, well, this is, has a minus 1, minus 1. It's like over x, over y. So this is secretly a complex fraction situation. If you would like, you can just write this down. It was minus 1, so you have to just divide by x, right? x to the first power, like that. Similarly, this is, was x minus 1. The base here is y, so it's divided by y. So it's a complex, situation, situa complex fraction situation. You can just multiply the top and bottom by x, y, right? Cool, huh? And now, let's see what we have. This times that, we get x, y, let me just try this down, x, y, and then times y to the x power, ln y, and then this times that, the x cancel out, y times y is y squared, so we have minus y squared, and we still have this part, x to the y's power, right? Now, on the bottom, same thing. This times that, so keep it x, y times x to the y's power, ln x. And y cancels out x times x is x squared, so minus x squared. And we also have y to the x power. Okay, now the bizarre part is, this is not the same result as what we got previously. And here is the deal. Notice that this right here has y to the x power, this is x to y's power, and this is y. This is x to the y's power, and this is y to the x power, right? The truth is, we have to refer back to the original. The idea is that x to the y is the same as y to the x. So in another word, these four things, they are all the same. So you can just imagine they are just the same thing on the top and the bottom. So you can cancel them out, but divide everything by the same thing. So you can just choo, 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 cross them out, right? I have technically, I had to replace this with one of the other, factor it and cancel. But hopefully you get an idea. This is calculus 3, so anyway. Finally, dy, dx, thanks to calculus 3, we get xy, ln y, minus y squared. Once again, I cancel this out already. And divided by xy, ln x, minus x squared. And the idea is that we have the same answer with two different methods. Which one do you guys like more? This is the calculus 3, and the previous video was calculus 1. Comment down below and let us know which method that you guys like more. And hopefully you guys like this video. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I like to do math videos for you guys. That's it.